Hello, Crimson Duel is here. I wanted today to talk about the exchange ships that, that uh, were just released into the game. I'm really excited about them. I think that they are going to be a really powerful tool because what they do, if I click into the card trainer, um, I can scroll over here and exchange box ships. It requires 100 to do an exchange. I have 200 right now. I think you can get up to 400 very easily. And it pulls up this whole list of cards, and what this is is a number of very old cards that were released very early in the game. You can exchange 100 ships for one card. Um, I think this was a problem prior because it was a barrier for players that are just starting to have to collect so many cards, starting from very recent ones to some decks requiring like a card or two that are very old. There's so many cards to get, you are limited in the number of gems you can get without spending money, and again, it was just a barrier. So. Um, you know, I wish that more cards would be included in this list, but I think there are a lot of really good options that you can choose from. So that is exactly what I am here to talk about. I want to help guide you to what you should select. Um, with your skill chips here, or I'm sorry, with your box chips here, I think you can get up to about 400 really easily. Right now I have 200, but here are my top five, and I'll give a couple of honorable mentions too. So the first one I am going to go with, this is a no-brainer Cosmic Cyclone. This card sees a ton of play right now. This actually sees more than Mystical Space Typhoon, I'm pretty sure. Um, you pay 1,000 life points, and you can banish one spell or trap card in your opponent's side of the field. The banishing is very powerful. It also works well with players like Bandit Keith, who you can use the skill switcheroo after you lose 1,000 life points, which you can do to yourself by using this. I think this is far and away the best card um, to choose from here. I have two. I'm definitely going to use at least once to get three. Um, you know, depending on how much you need the other cards in this list here, I don't think it would be a bad decision to use, you know, two of your, your choices on this card here. I don't think you need three, but three is definitely nice to have, and especially if you want to be competing at a top, top level. So number one, Mystic or Cosmic Cyclone, getting all my words confused today. Number two is going to be... We're going to do Forbidden Chalice. Um, another card that sees a lot of play today, and I should say, I think these two are probably the only cards in this list that, like, can get slotted into current meta decks, like, right now and, and really, you know, be useful. I think the others are kind of nice to have, um, will be probably useful one day, or, or you know, will fit into a deck at some point, but not, like, immediately slotting into a deck. Um, this card is very flexible, so you target one card in the field until the end of the turn. The effects are negated, so you can use it on your monster if there's times where it uh, benefits you to, like, you have a restrictive effect where, um, you know, like one of the Neos Fusions monsters, it can't attack your opponent directly. You could use this on it, that uh, effect is gone, it can attack directly and get a boost of 400 life points. You can use it on an opponent's monster that's about to use this effect on you, that effect no longer works, it does get a little boost in attack, but usually a good trade-off. Or if you're just 300 points short in attacking an opponent's monster and the effect really isn't relevant right now, um, you can now overcome that by just adding 400 attack points. So a lot of different use cases, really powerful. And because I'm already here, we're going to have an honorable mention for Forbidden Dress. Um, fairly similar here. You're losing 600 attack. Again, can be used on your card, your opponent's card. Um, but a, a nice to have for sure. So number two on the list, Forbidden Chalice. Number three on the list is going to be, drumroll please, it's going to be Floodgate Trap Hole. This is a really good card, um, but the only drawback really is that it's a limited three, and it would see more play today for sure if it was not. It's just that the other limited three trap cards we have are just, you know, objectively better, um, other than being maybe a little bit circumstantial. Now what it does, when your opponent summons a monster, you can change it to face down defense position, but not just that. Um, monsters that are changed to face down defense position by the effect cannot change their battle position. So your opponent gets a boss monster out in the field, you flip it face down, but your opponent can't flip it face up himself. Um, you'd have to attack it or use some type of uh, a card effect. And it is really powerful because obviously you can flip a card face down, but you basically lock down that monster and you also lock down that space in the field unless they have a way to get it off like tribute summoning or something like that, which is either not common or just not ideal for your opponent there. It also used to work really well for decks where, again, you're kind of eliminating a monster space on the field. So like there was a Cyber Dark deck years ago um, where 
one of the monsters was attacking your opponent directly, and the more you can just lock down spaces, the less your opponent has to work with, and can just stop what you're doing, and especially when you don't have to destroy your opponents and monsters to attack them directly. So number three on this list is Floodgate Trap Hole. I think there is a little bit of a drop-off in the list after here, and I think these next two um, are a little bit subjective, but let me know what you think. You know, does your list look different, um, or is it kind of different needs here? So, uh, a handful of good fusion, good I say objectively, um, not objectively good, but good is like high attack points and, and interesting effects, they're not very useful right now. Um, the Slash Dragons here, I don't recommend that because you can get it from a, um, a deck box there, but what the one I do want to look at is the Buster Blader, the Dragon, Destroy Your Swordsman. This card still sees some meta play, it's not like it very common right now, but even a few months ago it was um, working, and I know some people did it with Mech Knights, things like that. But this archetype does get support every now and again, so having a few of these, if you don't, is usually a good play. Now the, the Buster Blader, um, one of the effect monsters, do I have it up here? Let's do this, because this is going to be an honorable mention as well, while we're on the subject. Um, this is the one, the Destruction Swordmaster. Another one that you, you know, could do a consideration on, but I, I don't think it should be a priority by any means. But yeah, these cards are part of the archetype, so if you ever find an interesting one to play it, I think these are two considerations. Um, but really, number four in this list, going to the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman. And drumroll, please, for number five. This one is kind of an opinionated one, for sure. Um, but I, I really like this card. I, I never see it get play, and I think there's places that it could fit in. So, the card is Snipe Hunter. You discard one card, target one card in the field, you roll the dice. If, um, if it rolls a 2 through a 5, you destroy that card. But for decks that benefit from discarding cards or getting cards to the graveyard overall, I think it can be a really nice fit. This was years ago, but playing it with like a Blue Eyes White Dragon deck where you have the White Stone of... Um, the Ancient, and you want to get that card from your hand to your graveyard so you can activate the effect to bring out a Blue Eyes, it works really nicely there. So you potentially get to, you know, two-thirds chance, 66%, to destroy a card in the field. If you have multiple cards, like Orcus, for example, that you want to get to the graveyard, you can use this effect as many times per turn as you want. Um, again, I don't think it's a really clear play for, like, many decks today, other than I think Orcus could be an interesting one, but you can't really special summon on top of that, so maybe Orcus isn't perfect. Um, but yeah, a really interesting effect, and in plays where it works well, I think it can be a very powerful card. So that is number five on the list here, but I want to make sure I, I live you with enough value. want to give a couple of honorable mentions. So I did mention um, that other Buster Blader card, the other Forbidden Dress card, but a couple more here. Yeah, first one going to be, let's go by spells, Tribute to the Doomed, um, really similar to Snipe Hunter, about decks that um, benefit from discarding, discard a card, then destroy one monster in the field, pretty simple, um, but also pretty powerful, so if it's a card that you want to get to your graveyard, it could work nicely in having maybe one of these in your deck, probably don't want to load it up, but again, one is nice to play there. We're gonna do Wall of Destruction, or I'm sorry, Wall of Disruption for another one. Again, not really like a great fit in the meta, but it is a fairly powerful card, um, especially if your opponent has three or four monsters in the field. When your opponent declares an attack, all attack position monsters your opponent controls lose twenty, lose 800 attack points for each monster they control. So if they control four, um, you know everything they have is probably going down to zero attack points, 3,200. I mean that's gonna be very very painful. And not only that, but like your opponent, when this is triggered, especially again, if you have three, if they have three or four monsters in the field in the attack position, um, they're basically forced to end their turn. So then you go into your turn with them having a bunch of monsters with like close to zero or zero attack points that you can just attack and win the duel on the spot. So again, not not something you see in the meta much right now, but still can be a very powerful card. The next one. This is a limited one card and, and doesn't see much play because of it. Now, it's for one specific deck that it really works well, and that is the water deck that uses kind of the XC summoning using um, Shark Castle. And what it does, shuffle two water monsters from your hand into the deck, then draw three cards. A couple of KC Cups ago, when the water deck it felt like took over, I don't think this was limited at the time and very quickly moved to the limited list. 
Um, but this just made the deck incredibly consistent because, you know, there are a lot of water car or water, water monsters in the deck. Um, so being able to just shuffle through and, and find what you need is a very powerful tool. One consideration if it's a deck that you either play or are interested in playing could go this route. And the last one um, is, again, very situational, but it is something that I play in the Elemental Heroes deck that I've been playing with a little more again is double summon. You can conduct two normal summons in your turn rather than just one. Um, you know, it's not something you're going to use for like tribute summoning or something like that, but if you have a card that when you summon it allows you to search a monster from your deck that you need, and that's the exact case with the Elemental Heroes deck, you put out Elemental Hero Stratos so you can get an Elemental Hero Neos from the deck, you play double summon, and then you bring out Elemental Hero Neos so you can use the Hero Alliance skill and really just get the ball rolling that way. So I'll play one of these in the deck because I think there's just some situations where, you know, you can really need it there and, and that's, it's a barrier otherwise, but it's not something you're loading up like two or three of into the deck. Um, and after the first turn, if you draw it, it's usually not too helpful because by then you're really playing. That's all kind of specific to that one deck. Um, you know, uh, very situational once again for this card, but I hope this has been helpful. We have our top five cards to choose from your exchange um, chips there. And let me know your thoughts. Are, are you targeting different cards? Are these helpful to you? Um, and hopefully in the future, they expand the cards um, that are available through here. They probably will, like as they add new boxes, add, add new boxes to the game. They'll add a couple more boxes to the availability here, um, but we will see. So I really think it's a great addition and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed.